And last night I went to watch Raw, and I'm not at home, and so I'm watching on YouTube TV. And so they ask you where you are and everything like that, and are you here visiting, blah, 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 blah. So I'm, I'm looking at the, the Raw on my YouTube TV DVR, and it says, recorded five hours ago. I was like, that's weird. I guess maybe when I go to Oregon, I can watch the, the East Coast feed, because normally I can only watch the West Coast feed. As it turns out, and keep in mind this is my job, and I vaguely remember hearing something about this before it happened. Raw did not air in its normal time slot on the West Coast. It aired on the East Coast feed. It aired at 5 o'clock, okay? Dude, if I watched live, I would have had no idea that Raw was not airing at 8 o'clock. Zero zilch idea. I would have went to watch it live, and I would have been watching the Olympics or whatever. So uh, I would suspect that the raw number is going to be down artificially because of a large number of people on the West Coast. I mean, there's still like, you know, a large number of people that watch raw live, 75, 85 percent of people that watch raw live. So on the West Coast, in the West Coast time zone, anybody that tuned in to watch the show live that was unaware, there was no show to watch. So. I expect that the raw number is going to be down, and if it's like an all-time low or something like that, don't go on Twitter and do all your memes and celebrate that the show is dead, okay? It's a, <laughs> it's an aberration this week. I had no earthly idea. I would have been one of, I'm sure, maybe tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people that had absolutely no idea. So, the show itself, in case you were on the West Coast and you missed it, Nikki Cross comes out. Nikki Cross, here's a quick story on Nikki. She got a big pop when she won the Money in the Bank briefcase. She got a big pop when she cashed in. She went on the house show circuit and was booed. Well, she comes out here and she gets a pop when she comes out. She talks about how she's a superhero. Every time she mentions her outfit, every time she mentions the butterfly... Every time she mentions being a superhero, you can hear people booing. Well, Boo. they still like her overall, but they do not seem to like this Nikki Ash character. Which, by the way, now it's not Nikki Ash, it's Nikki A-S-H. Because I think oh. they figure, you're so dumb, if we say Nikki Ash, you're not going to figure out that it's almost a superhero. We have to give you the letters, A-S-H. So then you wonder, what does A-S-H stand for? And you look it up and you go, oh, almost a superhero. But is there a worse name to roll off the tongue than Nikki A-S-H? Just call her Nikki Ash. Do not, do not always uh, target the lowest common denominator, the absolute dummies. Target, you know, non-dummies. So anyway, she comes out, she does her deal. Charlotte interrupts. Charlotte wants a title shot. Rhea comes out. Rhea wants a title shot. And then finally, Sonya and Adam Pierce come out, and they announce that it's a three-way at SummerSlam. Charlotte then says, well, I want a match with you tonight not for the title to prove that I can beat you, and it is agreed that they will have a non-title match in the main event, even though Charlotte got screwed by Rhea Ripley last week, cashed in on. All things doesn't make any sense, but whatever. They did it. Damian Priest beat Sheamus in a non-title match. Good match. Good wrestling. It was good to see something new. Damian Priest wins. And so I'm sure, you know, maybe probably by SummerSlam, he'll get a championship match. But if you watch the show, he's probably going to get another non-title match next week, which he'll win. And they'll just keep doing this over and over until finally he gets his title match at the pay-per-view. As long as this ends with two grown men beating the hell out of each other, which is exactly what this is going to end with, I'll be fine with it. You'll be stunned to hear this, but as a person paid to cover professional wrestling, I had totally forgotten about AJ and Omos versus the Viking Raiders at the pay-per-view because they just keep doing everything over and over again. So the Viking Raiders got beaten in the pay-per-view, and they end up getting a championship match on this show because John Morrison, I think, got pinned in a six-man last week. Whatever. So AJ and Omos face the Viking Raiders. They don't air the entrance of AJ and Omos because I think they're concerned that everyone's going to cheer them. They wrestle the match. No one cares about the Viking Raiders because they want to cheer AJ and Omos. AJ and Omos win. The fans jump up in the air and they cheer and they, they're all happy. Why are these guys heels? 
Because their show is a broken record, my show has to be a broken record. I would prefer if they stopped this stuff so that I didn't have to say the same thing every week. Jinder Mahal promo. He wants Drew McIntyre to apologize for beating up old Shankly. Drew McIntyre will not apologize, and so he must face Veer. So he faces Veer. Everything is like, it's classic WWE. Wait, tell him about the other guy. What, Shankly? No, not Shanky. No, the Oh, the, the attorney? You got a oh, random, there's an, random There's dude. an attorney out there. doesn't matter. Here's the key, everybody. <laughs> you know how sometimes I say, WWE is a promotion where they got 40 writers. It's fake. You can literally do whatever you want. But they go out of their way to like make everything way more difficult than it needs to be. Well, here's a show where wins and losses, unless you're you're Bobby Lashley, and actually he's now in the wins and losses don't matter because he's doing constant jobs. But unless you're John Cena or Roman Reigns, wins and losses don't matter. They beat everybody. Everybody wins. Everybody loses. It, it totally doesn't matter. Except when it randomly really matters, okay? Which is what happened here. True McIntyre is facing Veer. They have a match. What's his face? Jinder throws a chair into the ring for Veer. Veer picks up the chair, but as he picks it up, Jinder is, or I'm sorry, Drew is flying in with a claymore. He kicks the chair into Veer's head, a chair that Veer brought into the ring. They ring the bell. They rule it a DQ. And of course, they announce that Drew is the winner. The other guy came into the ring with a foreign object. The object got kicked into his face. Now, if you've watched any WWE for 70 years or whatever, if you bring a weapon into the ring and it gets sent into your own face, when has that ever been a disqualification? Never. But today it was a disqualification. The ring announcer announces that Drew McIntyre is the winner via DQ. Well, then the announcers have to say, hold on a minute. The winner of this match is Veer. Veer is the winner. Veer's win goes into the history books or the record books or whatever. I'm like, what? First off, what difference does it make? <laughs> Who won via DQ? It doesn't make any difference. But today it meant a lot because now the announcers have to correct the ring announcer they have to correct it for the record i'm like who cares who could possibly care what difference does it make but of all the matches wins and losses never matter except this random three minute and 50 second match with drew mcdern veer it really matters they actually replayed eva marie's trip last week because <laughs> let's make everybody suffer then it's Natty and Tamina versus Eva and Dewdrop. Natty, they do a, a spot with Dewdrop, and I guess Dewdrop rolled over Natty's ankle, and Natty's out of action. And she's out of the match. They take her to the back. It looks like an ankle injury. We don't know the severity. I have not heard. I hope she's okay. I hate seeing people get hurt, especially because it was one of those things where it happens all the time in wrestling. It was a nothing spot. Like, I watched the spot. I couldn't figure out how she got hurt. This is the majority of injuries in wrestling. It was an accident. Stuff happens. But anyway, Tamina has to get in there, and they do some spots. And Alexa shows a video on the big screen of Lily spoofing Evolution. Eva is distracted. First, she has to act distracted. And then she is rolled up and uh, super kicked or whatever and pinned. Yeah. Keith Lee and Karrion Cross. In the middle of the show, they say, coming up next, Keith Lee will be facing Karrion Cross. I was like, what? <laughs> now, obviously, Jeff Hardy can't be there because he tested positive for COVID. So we have no follow-up to Keith Lee losing in two minutes to Jeff Hardy. The follow-up is Karrion Cross faces Keith Lee, and uh, Karrion Cross beats him via submission in uh, eight minutes. Four minutes of which was during a commercial, by the way. Submission, you say? Hey, just put him in the cross jacket and Keith Lee tapped out and he lost. Mm. Cool. It was not much of a match either. It, it was just 
there. And nobody cared, which is like, well, I mean, can you imagine? Nobody cared. Well, Karen Cross was beaten in two minutes by Jeff Hardy last week, and uh, Keith Lee was practically squashed by Bobby Lashley. You put them in a match together, and you don't have the boot chair button in the Thunderdome. You don't have uh, uh, anybody there to, you know, fake do whatever. So we get this. I'm sure Vince was furious. Oh, well, you booked the show, bro. You booked this stuff. It's your fault, brother, not theirs. Mansoor and Mustafa Ali, they face Mason T-Bar. It is a three-minute match. Mansoor makes a comeback, and he wins with a cradle. Um, Ali is shocked, but he's kind of low-key delighted. And as many people have noted, they're going to Saudi Arabia. And the babyface pop if Mansoor and Mustafa Ali won oh, these man. tag team titles. Bro, I am all for it. Do I have any faith they will not screw this up by the time they go to Saudi Arabia? No, I have no faith whatsoever. But man, that would be awesome if that happened. But I'm not, I'm not holding my breath. I've learned my lesson. Lashley comes out. And because, you know, everything's exactly the same, he does the exact same thing that Roman Reigns did with John Cena on Friday. Lashley will not dignify Goldberg's challenge with a response. So uh, then out come Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexander, who were feuding, but somehow this leads to them teaming to face Bobby Lashley in a two-on-one match after Bobby does the babyface challenge to take on both guys at the same time. He beats them, he stacks them like cordwood, and he pins them. John Morrison and Riddle, they have a 10-minute match. It is a very good match, and there is a distraction finish where almost breaks Riddle's scooter. Riddle is sad because his scooter is for Randy Orton, who's nowhere to be seen. And he gets pinned with a starship pain, and then the heels lay him out afterwards. Everybody chants for Randy. Randy's not there. I think Randy comes back in a week or two. It's going to be a gigantic reaction. So from that perspective, they're doing everything right. Reginald beats R-Truth to retain the 24-7 title. He just did a bunch of flips. And then uh, in the main event, I am not making this up if you don't watch Raw, Charlotte Flair faces Nikki Ash in a non-title match. She beats her up for 10 minutes. Nikki gets a short comeback. And then Charlotte rolls through a crossbody and pins her clean in the middle of the ring. She doesn't pull the tights. She doesn't cheat. She just beats her, which leads to a promo where Nikki Ash said, I was almost a superhero. I showed myself that I almost could have won. And the show goes off the air. They're doing this match again next week. And, uh... One sec. Max, come. I've got a zoo Are you in a here farm, now. or what's going on? Might as well be. Hang on, i got to get rid of this dog. Holy smokes. <laughs> We're going to find out a lot about Andrade with these three matches. And I hope they're yeah. great. Right, dog? So, we're not looking for a five-star match. We're looking for Max, sit. You're shaking your fist at the dog? No, it's one of the hand gestures that they taught us to, to, get, to get him to sit when he was in training. I it's see. Just, If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.